And so the cars set off on the rolling lap in this first Formula 2 race. Strong sunshine here at Skegness, despite the wintry conditions. And so the interesting question now begins, can anyone dent Kevin Stack's start to the 85 season as national points champion? Or can anyone stop Steve Witherson's run of success here at Skegness? Last year's track champion in 635 car. And the race is underway, leading off his car number 54, the white top of Martin Buckley. So the birthday boy is out in front, so they're spinning out on the turn, trouble there. It's a wet circuit with the ice having uh, thawed out, but it still provides a barrier on the turn. The yellow's being waved on the bend. There is 54 moving through the field. Martin Buckley from Hertfordshire, past one of the novices on the inside of that car that spun out on the turn. So it's Buckley leading in 54. Going inside on the turn there, looking down the field. It's car 501, Bill Trout. Trying to find a way through the field. Simon Chalkley moving up there on the left of the picture. Past several of the yellows already. Car 53 just in view, one of the yellow tops. But there is the race leader, 54, Martin Buckley. Another spin out on the bend, car 79. The victim this time, Paul Crawford from Ilkley in Yorkshire. Buckley now being trailed by 774, the yellow top driver, Richard Scrivener from Nottingham. So it's white from yellow at the moment in this Formula 2. There is Scrivener in his yellow top car, 774. Looking down the points chart for last year. Again, doesn't feature, must be a driver that retains his, red, his uh, grade. Yes, he scored 12 points last year. Enough insufficient meetings though to downgrade him. Two cars spinning out on the bend. And one of the novices caught there, 292. 98 just getting back into the race after having those problems on the bench. 774 up there now, Richard Scrivener. Scrivener going through on the inside of 79. Looks like he's dropped Buckley. Tall spoiler on that 826 car there, one of the whites. And Scrivener is certainly going well at the moment. Coming in now on the tail end, is going past one of the whites. He's got a blue in his sights now, that's 147. And yes, Scrivener is showing up very well in the early heats. Car going wide there. Scrivener on 12 points last year, retained his colour through lack of meetings. The bottom score in the yellows last year of those that actually qualified for it was 23 by Billy Fennick in car 28 last year. But Scrivener nonetheless featuring in the yellow roofed cars for 85. There's Steve Widdowson, the track champion, working his way through the field. Widdowson last year, 258 points here at Skegness, just in front of the second place man, Trevor Whitney. In fact, a good margin, 63 points, lead over Whitney on 195. Trevor Whitney has at the end of last year. Don't expect to see him here today. He's still getting himself back into race, fit race fitness. Widdowson very much the threat here. Can he get through the traffic, though, to get up into that first place? And there you see Willis just trailing Mike James at the moment. Richard Scrivener having a, some steering problems on that turn. It looked like for a moment had to go very carefully around the outside of that parked car. Scrivener at 774 has taken uh, Buckley's place at the front. Buckley now dropping well down the field. Willis is still working through. Roy Goodman, just in shot, 732, getting into trouble on that turn. He's lost his rear fender and he's collecting another car on the turn, 763, joining him in trouble. And 763 just heading for the infield, getting well out of the way. And he can see the problems of stopping a Formula 2 in these conditions. He's lost uh, part of his front bumper there as well. So back on the race, Scriven, they're still well and truly in control. Well, the chalk is up there now in 69. It, Difficult to see whether he's uh, the back marker. Indeed, Chalkley going wide. So there's no doubt whatsoever now that Scrivener comes through in 774. Chalkley giving it a battle on the outside. 682 spinning out on the bend. Indeed, that was halfway down the straight, I think, though. 682 in trouble. In the meantime, Scrivener's still there. Chalkley's still trying to get in some trouble just behind him. It looks like Scrivener's got a safe bet at the moment. Looking down the field beyond Scrivener, it's uh, a fair way down before they get to Mike James.
So Scrivener first. And Chalkley indeed is one of the back markers in the field. Having been lapsed. And there's the race for second place at the moment. Mike James in 617 is second. Third is Steve Witterson in 635. So these two are going to have the dogfight to see who will then take on Scrivener for the lead. There they are, a good shot around the turn of 617 and 35 together. And just behind them is Roy Goodman in 163. Well, some very solid driving there. Goodman trying to pick up the pieces on the inside as those two have their own private battle. Widowson from Nottingham and Mike James from St. Austell in Cornwall. Wide on the turn, got to watch out for that 763 car. Of course, while they're battling out between themselves, that could give Scrivener the chance to run away. And indeed, the chequered flag is out and Scrivener's made it in 774. Scrivener's first, the yellow top car, but second is Mike James in 617 or 635, Steve Willis, and it was very, very close at the end. Wait for the stewards' report on that official position. Looks like Roy Goodman picked up fourth place. But the winner of the race was number 774, Richard Scrivener from Nottingham. So the East Midlands coming out well in the opening race with both Scrivener and Widdowson in top positions. And there he is, the race winner, Richard Scrivener. Well, he only had 12 points last year, but he's already picked up some very useful points in the shape of eight points from his first race of 1985. So he's already got two-thirds of his total from last year. Well, the Formula 2s leave the circuit, and the, of the official result then of the first race for the Formula 2s was in first place, number 774, Richard Scrivener. Second place, 635, Steve Witherson. So we're Nottingham 1-2 there in the first race. Third place, Mike James. Fourth place, 163, was Roy Goodman. Fifth, 804. That's Ian King. Sixth place was 52, Martin Lamb. Seventh was 753. Andy Morris, eighth was 313, Gary Bark. So a good start there for Nottingham with uh, Scrivener and Witherson getting first and second. By the way, the points in the Formula 2s run 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Points doubled up in the final. So Steve Witherson starts off his 85 season with seven points here at Skegness and eight points for the winner, Richard Scrivener. Well, there we see a very spectacular sight around the raceways this year. You may remember the Russell Taylor car last year with the sprint car spoiler in the Formula 2s. Well, this year, Gerald Taylor's got a sprint car spoiler as well. And also, as you can see, the Taylor Racing Team are now sponsored by the Skull Bandits chewing tobacco. And uh, Skull Bandits are sponsoring the whole season at Hartlepool this year, putting up a lot of money up at the uh, Northeastern Raceway. And, of course, the Taylor's all connected to the promotion there at Hartlepool. So as you can see, there's uh, some good money there for the uh, 250s, for the 250 car here today. But there is a man who certainly picked up plenty of uh, points last year, and it's number 212 man, Frankie Wayman, the 1984 National Points Champion. And so lines up for the 85 season with the silver roof. So we saw the 628 Kevin Stack silver roofed car, or red with silver roof, in the Formula 2s in the previous race. So we had one national points champion there, and in the very next race, we've got the other national points champion, Formula 2 and now Formula 1. Richard Ainsworth out there in car 354. He went very well in that opening meeting up at uh, Northampton not so long ago. Won the first heat, didn't uh, get in the top three, though, after that. Had a marvellous time, though, in the World Long Track final last year at Barlow when he finished in the top three. On the outside, another northeast, and a formerly a Frankie Wayman protege, but now seems to be tending in a different direction. 452, Joe Jopling. As you can see, it's an interesting construction there for the cab. Looks like the rear struts fall within the overall uh, expected rear support cab structure. Anyway, there's 36, uh, Rod Falding. Rod back up to a red top for the 85 season. 19th place in the points chart last year, just moving up from the Blues. His son also races, uh, 33 Peter Folding. And there just on the right is car number 92. One of the reds, that's not a common sight on the raceways, that 92 car. We haven't seen it too often. And indeed the reason is that uh, George Braithwaite was retired at the end of the season. He was listed at the end of season points chart as retired, having won one final and three heats and have scored 529 points, so justifying the red roof there. So it's good to see George Braithwaite from Clitheroe back. Frankie Wayman's got problems, though. He's uh, leaking something out the bottom of the car there. Looks like a water hose is draining, but I uh, don't know if that's going to affect the engine too much. 
So Frankie Wayman sets off on the running lap. He's uh, facing a familiar sight now, having to face the remainder of the cars. Of course, as national points champion, he only gives way to uh, Stuart Smith at the back of the grid this season. So now we have Formula One racing in the World Championship qualifying round. This is the first of three heats, the first eight qualify. And the cars build up the speed on the rolling lap. Coming up now in front of the starter. And the green flag's down, the race is underway here at Skegness. They don't have Formula Ones too often here, but uh, when they do, they certainly go on, give a splendid sight here on this tight raceway. Look at that for a start. The white top's in trouble right away. The car's spinning out, five through six goes away. Unfortunately, have no list of the white top drivers here today at Skegness. So I'll just call now. Oh, there's Bob Baker. We've got a the name there. 536 Bob Baker leads from three other white tops there. And in the meantime, 117, the one that spun out earlier, is still having trouble even getting onto the said degree. And he's now found the uh, sanctuary of the turf on the inside. In the meantime, Baker still out in front going around. The pit turn, another white top's drifted out to the fence very serenely there, car number 411. Then a the yellow strike through his number, I think that's a declaration of intent. 293 abandoned out on the fence, and 157 is through, that's a very appropriate name. John Carr, I think it is, Carr. Certainly there's flames underneath that car, that should see the yellows brought out, unless that dies out fairly fast, and I think it has. 411 looks safe at the moment. We've got a fine race at the moment between 157 and 536. Carr against Baker. And in the meantime, Gary Heap's got himself into trouble on the turn, 188. And there are those two leading cars out in the fence. Carr has lost his place, along with his major challenger, 536, Bob Baker. And that is now not the leading car. He's been overhauled. And there is the race leader coming out of the turn. As you can see, they're picking their way along this track very, very carefully. This leader going into the turn is car 16, John Richards. I think we saw John at... Uh, Northampton last week, but I don't think we saw him do that. Gerald Taylor getting in uh, the thick of the action, pushing John Carr out the way, and the Skull Bandit car hits the front. Gerald Taylor out in front in car 250, brother of the Hartlepool promoter Warren Taylor. And Frankie Wayman cars at the field behind. But there's a blue top out in front now. Wayman stalled yet to get past the reds. There's Richard Ainsworth just in front of him. Joe Jopling, 452, one place up. Now going past that 536 car of Bob Baker. Gerald Taylor leads, though. Certainly a splendid sight, the uh, Gerald Taylor car. And Wayman's got problems. Brian Tumplin lies second behind Gerald Taylor in 250. Frankie Wayman's got a bit of work to do. Joe Jopling's out. Bob Baker and John Carr, the two early leaders, have taken Jopling out of the race there, it would seem. So Jopling, the victim of the two white tops. John Richards has left his car where he spun out while in the lead. Ainsworth just threading his way through. Frankie Wayman as well. Gerald Taylor leads in the car number 250, 30th in the points chart for 1984, with 372 points. Wayman going through on the inside of Ken Brown, having a fair battle there with the 35-numbered yellow top. In the meantime, Gerald Taylor is down the, the straight, just beyond that turn, so there's about uh, the length of straight between him and Wayman at the moment. Other cars, though, filling with the positions in between. Gerald Taylor looking fairly steady at the moment. Looks like Tuplin's being dropped. There's Wayman just coming out of the turn. He's thrown off the challenge of Rod Falding in 36, and also that looked like Ainsworth for a moment. There's Gerald Taylor, though, in 250, leading this Formula One race qualifier for the final. First eight go through to that grand final here at Skegness. They had, uh, I think, just the one Formula One date here last year. They've got three this year. This is the first. Of the three, Wayman has now worked his way through the field into a strong position. As you can see, the cars are taking things very carefully on this tarmac here this afternoon. Very wet surface. Gary Heap now about to be lapped by Gerald Taylor. Last year, Gerald Taylor, looking down my list at a uh, number of uh, wins, he had four heat wins last year. So, seeing him working up quite nicely here at Skegness this afternoon with a victory. Looks like he's holding off the challenge off the Reds at the moment. Taylor unopposed at the moment, and just a very stylish drive at the moment. Taylor going through that chicane between Richards and the other car out on the ropes. Very comfortably placed. 
not too much of a challenge. Gerald Taylor heading down the straight there. So it looks like Rich Nainsworth is lying second, a good way behind. Taylor coming into the closing stages of the race into the final quarter. Looks like we've got four laps to go. Gerald Taylor down the straight. Ainsworth seems to be about 40 yards behind. Wayman's not too far behind him. There indeed is Frankie Wayman, just behind that Gary Heap car. I think the second place is just in front of Heap. And indeed it is Richard Ainsworth. So it's Gerald Taylor from Richard Ainsworth and Frankie Wayman in third place at the moment. Can Ainsworth and Wayman make the challenge on the 250 car? There's not too many laps left for them to do it in. There is Taylor, there is Richard Ainsworth in second, trying desperately to get on terms. Richard Ainsworth from Olverston in Cumbria, going out wide between those two cars. That's a terrible obstacle on that turn. Really got to be very careful. One slight slip and you're out of the race, tangled up in the wreckage. Gerald Taylor coming down before, below the starter. Into the last lap indeed here at Skegness. So it looks as if Ainsworth's challenge will not materialize on the final lap. We just saw Taylor going out of view. Ainsworth doesn't seem to be making up the distance. And now Taylor has an unopposed run through the final bend. The first color other than white or yellow to hit the front. Gerald Taylor and the Reds just couldn't catch him. Gerald Taylor wins the first Formula One heat. Second, 354, Rich Ainsworth. And third, 212. Frankie Wayman. Those positions, of course, subject to confirmation by the steward and the lap scorers. But uh, I don't think there's any doubt over the race winner there, though. Gerald Taylor in car number 250. So the Skull Bandits get their first success here on Screen Sport of the season. Frankie Wayman picking up useful points. That's the way to retain a, a national points championship. Plenty of meetings and just getting up there in the placings. The heat wins and the final wins, they're the bonus, but just amassing points, that's the task. Well, now we have the official result of the first race in the Formula 1s here at Skegness. And the winner of Heat uh, 1 was confirmed as 250, Gerald Taylor. Second place, 354, Richard Ainsworth. Third was 212, Frankie Wayman. Fourth, 36, Rod Falding. Fifth was car number 35, don't have a name at the moment. Sixth place was number 92, George Braithwaite. Seventh was number 188, Gary Heap. And eighth was number 117, Robert Scriven. Now, points in the heats in the Formula 1s, 485, are 12 points for a win, 10 for second, 9 for third, then 8, 7, 6, 5, and 4, down to 8th place. Well, Bobby Burns is up here at Skegness today. It looks like he's lining up in heat 3, with his car out in the pits, and there's the coach that he uses. Of course, uh, this is really the home for old coaches, uh, stock car track. They're uh, very popular as... Uh, as car transporters. Bobby Burns last night in Long Eaton's opening meeting finished second uh, pretty well throughout the meeting. Indeed finished second in the finals Bert Finnegan and also finished second in the Grand National qualifying heats. Nigel Wharton so he's out to go one the better Reds, here at Skegness. In the meantime the starters getting flags ready for the start of heat number two of the Formula Ones. There we have 285 and 177 in the white tops. Bert Finnegan with a red roof this year. Looks like a change to the car there. I believe his back suspension has been improved. He won that uh, final last night at Long Eaton, and in the words of uh, Long Eaton promoter Keith Barber, is certainly flying at the start of this year. Very much the man to watch. Determined to get his uh, points championship back after losing it out to Frankie Wayman last year. So the race is underway, the green flag drops, and it's the whites leading off as usual. There's a yellow already spun out, so looks like 4-5-2 has pulled out. 285 then leads from 177. Apologise for the lack of names for the Whites at the moment. As I say, they, there has been no publication of uh, White Tops here today. Just going back through my records. Can't find the 285 there at the moment. 285 leads nonetheless. Uh, 177 in the second place. That's Alan Eccles. So we do have a name there, but Eccles getting himself in trouble. 285 leads. Looking fairly good at the moment. 458, that was Terry Davis who pulled out there. That's 454 four going through. 535. Five. And the car getting edged off there. Jeff Nichols. Just saw Finnegan going through the picture. The red tops there. 
with the blue of Peter Folding not far behind. Dave Taylor, 136, being edged out as Finnegan goes through on the inside. John Lunds there as well in 53. And 156, Graham Blundell. Blundell using the bumper there on the car in front of him. John Lund. And quite a dogfight there between those reds at the moment. Finnegan just trying to edge through on the inside of Blundell. Peter Falding in attendance just behind. Son of Rod, who we saw earlier. But Finnegan seems to be shrugging off the challenge of those other Reds. He's got past Graham Blundell now in 156. And trouble there for John Toulson, getting involved in a real scrap there in that turn. 459, Chris Pax were being edged out by Dave Taylor in the background. And Toulson's got a bit of work to get back in the race there in that 286 car. 13th and last year's points. 215, Jeff Nichols was edged onto the centre green, but is back in the race now. In the meantime, though, 285 still has the clear run out in front. So it's 285 leading. The white top still has the race lead, but he's getting into trouble on the turn. Finnegan just behind John Lund, 53 from 55 there. Finnegan was just the one static orange light that would appear this year rather than the standard flashing superstar light. Finnegan working his way well and truly up through the field on the inside of John Lund there and shrugs off the challenge of the 53 car, gaining another place now. But Finnegan from Leek in Staffordshire in car 55. Those two yellows standing like sentries on the entrance to the straight. Blundell just holding out the challenge of Peter Falding. Coming down the straight there, 33, 156. 156 goes wide though, and that's the chance of Peter Falding from Rotherham. But Blundell's recovered and pulls back to retain the place. 285 going past Jeff Nichols. Still holding on to the lead, having to break going into the turn. Nichols giving him a rough ride there around the bend. Gotta watch out for those cars parked on the inside. 285, still the race leader here. There's Ian Smith in 367. One of the blue top cars. About to be overhauled by the 285 car. Seems to be getting a lot of spin on the bends. Graham Blundell and Peter Folding in close quarters there. Peter Folding uh, sliding going down the straight there. Not too far off being uh, caught by, up by the back marker. By the uh, race leader, rather. He's a couple of back markers at the moment. There is 285 closing in. Peter Falling and Graham Blundell having a marvellous fight, but they're losing ground all the time as the race leader comes up to even lap the red and blue top. Falding with back wheel spin. Ian Higgins is there as well, car 29, one of the yellows, a spectacular driver, always entertains the crowd can often cause absolute mayhem out there for some of the drivers 285 trailing at the moment those two cars there 156 and 33 and that looks like the main challenge is second no that's John Tilson he spun out earlier so he must be a lap down Jeff Nichols is a lap down Dave Taylor could well be the challenger in second place It is car number 285 still with the lead. Two eight five just pushing it on Graham Blundell. And there is Toulson who's uh, got a lap to make up going past the leader, but uh, he's still still paying the price of having that spin out early on. And a complete about turn. Okay, past 285, certainly a difficult race to read at the moment, but uh, White Top 285 still is the apparent leader. And going wide on the turn, going back in. Meantime, Tulsa's in trouble and getting hit right round again, so that's the second spin out for John Tulsa. Hits the fence as well. Runs along the wires, but uh, gets back into the race. But he's lost placings again. Ian Higgins just trailing him in 29. But 
Robert Finnegan going through on the inside of 20 of 93. Brian Bennett, John Lund, and John Tilson just behind. And the race indeed has been won by car number 285, the white top driver. But we still have no name for 285. Unfortunately, it still remains anonymous. Car 285 wins the second heat of the Formula Ones by a fairly comfortable margin. As for the remaining places, I think we'll wait for the steward on that. And while the cars come out for Heat 3, there you see Vic Milner in 41. I can give you the first two places only in Heat 2. First was 285, and it was Les Ford, the driver, and second was 55, Bert Finnegan. Heat 3 gets underway, the green flag drops. We've got some star talent in this one. You just saw Harry Smith in view, car number 100. And thank goodness some familiar white tops in this one. And a lot of these are at Northampton recently. Vic Milner, 41, getting in trouble, 4 3 -0. Mick Crocker seems to have hit the front. 4 7 4, hitting, heading for the infield. Yes, there he is, Mick Crocker with the name clearly on the side with a gift for a commentator with the White Tops. Thank you very much, Mr. Crocker. Mick Crocker leads in 4-3. I think he won a race at Northampton. Yes, he won the consolation at Brayfield in our first showing of the 85 season here on Screen Sport. And Crocker leads heat three here at Skegness. He's getting challenged from second place, though. 2-4-8 closing in there in second place, trying to use the bumper. One of the White Tops heading out for the fence correcting himself in time the main question is where is Harry Smith he's certainly has a knack of carving through the fields at a very early stage and there he is just getting in front of Warren Jackson in 104 so Smith a little slow coming out of that turn he's got the line now he's not too far behind the race leader normally gets up there within about uh, four laps of the start on his uh, recent form won the Long Eaton Super Bowl in the uh, New Year's Day meeting that we showed here on screen. Sport also won his heat, came second in the final and won the Grand National at Northampton. So Harry Smith, very much the man to watch at the moment, scoring superbly in the opening meetings. Mick Crocker leads in 4 3 0. A couple of cars stranded on the outside there. Crocker with a clear margin at the moment. Heading into the turn, second is 2 4 8. Third is 41, Vic Milner. And then there's a huge cluster of cars chasing the fourth place, and Harry Smith is one of them. One, four, five, spinning out there onto the infield. Crocker just going past. There is Harry Smith just behind Keith Riley. Moving in there on Murray Harrison in car 97. He's got a blue top. Warren Jackson just behind, and there's another red lying not far behind those. Harry Smith gradually getting through, getting clear of the group of cars and getting some clean, fresh air in his face. Mick Crocker edging into the turn. Three white tops still out there, a red not far behind. There is Harry Smith, up from blue last year. Really had a superb end of season. But it took a long time to get into the reds because of the uh, complexities of the grading system in the Formula 1 stock cars which meant that Harry was off the blue grade for quite a while while he was really up to red car, to a red roof standard. There's Dave Beresford now working his way through. Harry Smith has already gone. Now Beresford's looking for a place himself. Take a bit of time, though, to get past Warren Jackson in 104. In the meantime, Harry Smith, very much the flavour of the month, won the end-of-season meeting at uh, Long Eaton, as well as that Super Bowl in January. Amongst his many wins. Keith Riley in 3 8 he went well at Northampton not so long ago. Harry Smith, one of the White Sox just heads for the infield. It looks good for Smith at the moment. How often that name Smith seems to crop up in the Formula 1 stock cars. There's Bobby Burns, 471, not too far behind. Dave Beresford in 260, working their way up into the place since they should be in the top eight by now. The halfway stage has just been passed. Union Jack Flank having been shown at the eight-lap stage. Beresford, Burns, Vic Milner, and 108 Steve Evans, former track specialist at Blackburn. A very similar shaped circuit to this Skegness circuit. Unfortunately, Blackburn no longer with us, although there is talk that there is a possibility of uh, racing being staged at Bolton in compensation. There's 233 into the fence, one of the white tops. In the meantime, Mick Crocker, 
Still has first place. Harry Smith is challenging strongly, though not too far behind. Nick Crocker leads in 4-3-0. There is Harry Smith battling away into second place. Third place is uh, Warren Jackson, then in 104. And Harry Smith edging around the turn. There's the lead. Mick Crocker first. Murray Harrison having spun off on the infield. So he's back in the race now in car 97. Murray Harrison battling to get back into contention here at Skegness. In the meantime, Warren Jackson's been collected by Dave Beresford, who's got himself into trouble, and uh, Bobby Burns and Steve Evans have taken advantage of that. Dave Beresford in 2.60, trying to edge the car out of the way, getting caught himself. Harry Smith is second. Bobby Burns is now up to something like third or fourth. Beresford still in the race. He's shown his class by holding on to his position, not losing too much ground. Harry Smith in second place, now moving in on the leader. The hunter stalks his prey now. Mick Crocker going through on the inside of the back marker. Harry Smith having to bide his time at the moment, seeming to slide very gracefully out of that um, turn, but not too speedily. Going for the inside, very greasy surface now after being wet early on. Dave Tapping's challenging in 4-1-2, just behind Harry Smith, having been lapped. Not giving Smith the easiest of times. Harry Smith from Colne in Lancashire. Very popular driver. Has tended to drift in and out of the sport, but uh, now making a big go of it in red top status. And really, if he were to commit himself fully during the season, I think there's a major threat there to Wayman's National Points Championship, not to mention Stuart Smith's gold roof. Mick Crocker still holding on to that first place. Dave Tapping parks on the grass now. That's the distance between first and second, and it looks like Harry Smith is having terrible trouble getting out of the turns. If anything, I suspect that Crocker's car is a little lighter and he is able to uh, handle those bends a little better. The back marker not helping there at all for Harry Smith. On the last lap now, Mick Crocker just half a lap away from victory over no none other than Harry Smith. But Harry Smith is going to pick up ten points at the very least. Down the straight for the final time, it's a win for 4-3-0. Mick Crocker, second place, number 100, Harry Smith. He was challenged, though, by Bobby Burns at the end in 4-7-1. Fourth place going to Steve Evans in 108, then 2-6-0, Dave Beresford. Well, that's my reading of it. Looks like Keith Reiner got a useful position as well as... Uh, Warren Jackson wait for official confirmation from the starter and Harry Smith on this on the uh, lap after the race spinning out good job that didn't happen before anyway Harry Smith picked up 10 points for second place but the winner was the white tub who held on all the way Mick Crocker showing up very well on screen sport that's his second win in two programs won the consolation at Northampton now wins the heat here at Skegness and that's white roof I don't think it's going to be white for too long at that rate Mick Crocker with two wins in two successive weeks here on screen sport and there's Bobby Burns, the third place man, the car dealer from Ilford in Essex. The man who has to travel quite a bit of mileage to compete in the Formula Ones. And Dave Beresford from Hyde in Cheshire in fourth place. So the red top's going well there in heat three, but nonetheless held out by White in the shape of 4 3 0, Mick Crocker. We now have the official results for those last two heats. Heat 2 resulted in a win for 285 Les Ford, then 55 Burt Finnegan, then came car number 93, then number 53 John Lund, 29 Ian Higgins, 177, then 535, and 8th was number 33 Peter Falding. In the third heat, the winner was 430, Mick Crocker, second 100 Harry Smith, then 471 Bobby Burns, 260 Dave Beresford, 104 uh, Warren Jackson, 140, then 59 Buster Watson, and 108 Steve Evans. So those were the results of the last two heats. Now we move on to the Formula 2s once more. 6.28, Kevin Stack got the uh, riding on the side of the car, the silver line, just to confirm the silver stripes on his roof as national points champion. Refresh your memories. The winner last time out was car number 774. 774, driven by Richard Scrivener with uh, Steve Witterson in second, Mike James in third, Roy Goodman in fourth. So let's see how it goes this time. A yellow top winner in the first Formula 2 race. Will we get it again here in the second attempt? There we see the yellows going through. There's Smiler Hudson, car 23. You saw the rounded roof going through the field there. Car 20 going wide on the bend. Car 20, Steve Franklin from Huddersfield. Time. There's two battling it out for first and second. Car 56 marginally in front at the moment. 
but he's got a challenge on the inside from Martin Buckley, the early race leader in the first Formula 2 race. 292 is just pulled out on the outside. 826 is third. So it's 54 from 56 in this Formula 2 race. There you see the chasing field. Some reds showing up well already. 292 still having problems in novice. There's 635 Steve Widdowson. Widdowson just training Smiler Hunts in the car 23. Smiler a starter at a couple of tracks. And Steve Witherson definitely finishes with 258 points last year in the Skegness points chart number one. 56 now slips in front of Martin Buckley in 54. Witherson working his way through the field. He's still trailing Hudson in 23. Smiler Hudson, the winner of the Formula One, Formula Two, rather, at Avon Super National Championship here at Skegness on. Uh, that's afternoon in December that we covered here on Screen Sport. 8.26 spinning out there. He was well placed early on in third place. Now just sits and watches the cars going past. Widdowson still has to get past Hudson in 23 to make a real challenge in this race. 56 first, 54 is second, Martin Buckley. There's Hudson and Willis are just training car 501, Bill Trout. And 26 wide, having spun out a good way down the field. And there's the chance of Willis and throw on the inside of Hudson. Widdowson going through the inside of two cars there, 501 and 826 as well. So Willison is now challenging strongly for first place. Bill Trout challenging Willison back. But it's not far now for Witherson to catch up with those race leaders. The two white tops, 56 and 54. There indeed you see Martin Buckley, Witherson's in third place. And now in second, he's got 56 in his sights. Witherson showing his specialization on this Skegness circuit. Overall, Witherson's points to the 433. <coughs> Pardon me there. Too. You got 258 of those here at Skegness. So well over half his points coming on this Lincolnshire circuit last year for Steve Witherson. In the second place at the halfway stage, 56 obligingly going wide there. That's the chance for Witherson, but he's blocked once more coming back into the straight. Well, that white top certainly knows he's got uh, plenty of uh, competition now with Witherson just clipping the inside and sails through into first place. So Witherson hits the front. Where is the challenge going to come from? That's the main question. We've got a couple of other classy red top drivers in this one, but they're a fair way down. We've got 804 Ian King, 617 Mike James, 907 John Dorn, 628 Kevin Stack. So there is Widdowson down the straight. 56 in the second. Martin Buckley third. Hudson is fourth. And here come the red tops. 617 Mike James coming up into the placings now. Roy Goodman not far behind, just saw on the right uh, the yellow back of the 907 car of John Dorr. Just behind him is Kevin Stack. There's Ian King from Boston in 804. Mike James from St. Paul, still 617. And Witherson showing his. Uh, expertise on this circuit by leaving a lot of these top West Country drivers well down the field. Although James is now leading the West Country Challenge. Quite a bit of rivalry between those drivers in the north of England and the Midlands and the West Country drivers. There's Kevin Stack having the handicap of coming from the back. But uh, he's got a lot more work to do this year to get the race wins than he had last term. Stack looking to get in the placings. He didn't get in the placings in that first Formula 2 heat. Got a long way to go to really get among the major points in this one, at least maintaining a presence in the race. And as you can see, he's still got quite a few red tops in front of him. He's just gone past John Dorr in car 907. There is the position at the moment. Steve Widdowson in 6.35, well clear. 
two laps, sign is out. And Stack has a long way to go. Witherson leads. Looks like he's beginning to get some challenge for second place from car 147 into the final lap. Witherson coming into the final turn now. Pretty unopposed victory. Had the second place first time out behind uh, Scrivener, but this time comes home for the win. 6-3-5 Steve Witherson with comparative ease. And as you can see, the Reds still a fair way behind as they come across the line. So the West Countryman, well beaten there by Steve Witherson. Mike James seems to be the main threat from the West Country in this meeting, car 617. But as it stands, Steve Witherson dominating this meeting. He's picked up 15 points already, a second place and a win. Roy Goodman there has just hit the fence. And the veteran has to contemplate the job getting that car back into the pits. So that's two Formula 2 races gone here at Skegness, and Steve Witherson dominating affairs with a second place and a win in car 635. Well, we have official confirmation that Steve Witherson indeed was the winner of the second Formula 2 race. We still don't have the full 1-2-8. I can tell you the 7th and 8th places. 7th was Kevin Stack, and 8th was John Dorr in 907. But the West Country pretty well eclipsed in the Formula 2s. Now we're back to the Formula 1s with the consolation race eight cars required for the final 411 and three five three six getting themselves into trouble at a very early stage and the whites really getting stuck in early on one five seven then leads one five seven now in front 82 spinning four two dave tapping just going through vision Five seven being challenged by Dave Tapping there. That's John Carr in 157. He looked good in his early race before eventually being forced out. Absolute, uh, absolutely terrible problem there trying to get through that turn. Mayhem developing all over the track. A gap has emerged though in the middle of the bend, allowing cars to get through. 458 there, Terry Davis. Spinning out Chris Paxford, 459. It's gradually working through. It's giving the Blues a pretty clear run at the moment. 4-5-4 four, four there. It's uh, Phil Haig. 2-1-5. Jeff Nichols just behind. And Brian Tuffin has got himself into trouble. The man who calls himself the Lincoln Imp, and it looks like his steering is gone. No, the steering's OK. It's just that I don't think you can get that uh, front wheel into any kind of order. Keith Riley just going past the camera. Joe Joplin's there. Graham Blundell, 156. Dave Tapping. Sun coming out once more here at Skegness. The track drying out all the time, but it's drying out really to give a, a pasty mud top layer. John Carr in 157. Oh, Haig getting into trouble there. 474 also going out to the yellow top car. And the Constellation race living up to the reputation of Constellation race. There's a lot of problems with inexperienced drivers trying desperately to get in the top eight qualifying places for the final. A lot of white tops, and uh, the result is uh, drivers trying to find a different way off the track. 161, Kev Lowe going past the camera there, just trying to make sure he wasn't going to hit a fence post. John Carr leads in 157. We've already had a white top win here. On me at Skegness in the shape of uh, Nick Crocker in the third Formula One heat. Kev Lowe still has problems. John Carr being edged out at the moment by 293. 293, Rob Allen just slipping through on the inside of John Carr. And Rob Allen appears to be a back marker, just giving John Carr some problems at the moment, and indeed 293 drifts out. Just in front of him is one of the blue tops. It's car number 82, the halfway mark, just coming up in this Formula One consolation race. Rob Allen still having problems. 145 going out to the fence. 293 parks the wrong way around on that turn. Graham Blundell is there. 
there is John Carr, 157. Blue top charge coming from Dave Tapping, although he could well be a lap behind. Don't have access to the lap charts here, but it, we think that Tapping had problems earlier on. 157, John Carr still leads. He's got 64, not too far behind. He again could be a back marker, one of the yellows. Consolation races really take on the style of a banger race sometimes. <laughs> Dave Tapping getting well on well and truly on top of that bonnet and that yellow top. I think it's Chris Paxman who now joins him on the inside. Murray Harrison's just in front. John Toulson out there in 286. Graham Blundell just behind him, 156, 215. Jeff Nichols also in view. There's 157. Edging his way past the wrecked cars on the inside. John Carr first. Now let's look for the chasing pack. Murray Harrison, second, third, Chris Paxford, fourth, John Toulson. That at least the unofficial position. Toulson. Review there, just challenging the two yellows. He's through past one. He's still got Paxford to catch Chris Paxford from Cotswolds. I think my memory serves me right. I think Sirencester is what I saw recently. Paxford going wide. There's a gap on the inside. Toulson now challenging Murray Harrison. So the red top's getting up into the placings now, that 286 car. Murray Harrison proving to be a sturdy opponent there. Plenty of cars on the inside of that turn causing problems for anyone trying to overdo things. Brian Tuplin's car abandoned on the infield there, number 155. In the meantime, 157. John Carr still out in front. Blue top 367 of Ian Smith challenging. And also Keith Riley in 328. 41, Vic Milner. Toulson, the red top, gradually edging his way up through the field. In the meantime, there's the race leader, number 157, John Carr. Carr is first. John Toulson is indeed in second place. We've had confirmation from the lap scorers. Carr first in 157. Toulson. Second in 286. We'll surely pick up the points so we can catch up with that 157 car. There's Ian Smith challenging Jeff Nichols in 215. Using the bumper well, but Nichols has held on equally well. There's Ian Smith in 367, still pushing all the time. Keith Riley just behind in 328. 458, Terry Davis and just in view. Nichols has plenty of opposition behind him. Into the last lap now of this race. So can Toulson catch the 157? Driven by John Carr. You understand my pause there, trying to avoid saying the 157 car of John Carr. Anyway, it came out anyway. John Carr around the final turn. And it's another win by a white over a chasing red top, just like Crocker beat Smith. So John Carr beats John Toulson. 157 from 286. Those are the first two places in this Formula One consolation race. Looks like Graham Blundell has made it through. He could well be in third place when the lap charts are studied. Looks like Blundell's through. Jeff Nichols. Also 215, Jeff Nichols. And looking further down the field. I think there could be a couple of other white tops getting through. And possibly Terry Davis. Wait for the official confirmation of the top eight in the Formula One consolation. Let's now take a look at the results of that Formula One consolation race. In first place, number 157, John Carr. In second place, 286, John Toulson. In third place, officially, number 215, Jeff Nichols. In fourth place, 458, Terry Davis. In fifth place, number 156, and that was Graham Blundell. In sixth place, number 145. In seventh, number 459, Chris Paxford. And in eighth place, number 452, Joe Jopling. Well, that's all we have time for here at Skegness in this uh, mixed Formula meeting. We look forward to seeing you, though, again next week for more Formula 1, Formula 2 and mini, st mini stocks action here at Skegness Stadium. Goodbye.